Y'all don't understand the struggles of being a black man out here in America and not knowing whether or not you're going to make a home to your churn every night because of the police gunning you down. But don't y'all be out here gunning each other down? Okay, but we ain't talking about that. Hell, don't y'all be rapping about killing each other in music? We ain't talking about that either. We can talk about killing each other in rap music, but we don't like the police killing us. Stay on subject, woman. You brought up your kids. Tyrone, you don't even see your kids. And then, yeah, I be trying to see my kids. You know my baby mamas be tripping because I don't want to be with none of them, so they be holding my kids from me. You know that. Okay, but your baby mama saying you don't give them no child support either. Okay, but I still be going out my way to try to see them. They live five minutes from my house, Tyrone. That is out my way, woman. See, y'all, that's what we don't like y'all black women's mouths. Y'all run y'all mouth too much. Y'all always bringing up stuff that's irrelevant. Well, was you cheating on me, Irrelevant? I only cheated on you 10 times. You act like I do it every day, bro. See, that's why we date women of other races, man. Hey, boo, hey. It is Lexus Exodus, leader of the Black Women Exodus. How are y'all doing? And like always, if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe, please share, please comment in the comment section. Let me know that you're listening. Also, if you enjoy listening to my content on the go, the show is now available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts for audio listeners. Go check out my Patreon community where you can get access to bonus episodes and exclusive content and also a private community of like-minded, divested women. It is linked below. Please also follow me on social media platforms. You can check me out everywhere on all platforms at Lexus Exodus. I also have a backup channel just in case something happens to this one. It is called Lex X. That's L-E-X-E-X. -E -E you can find all of this information in the description below. Me, that's a bop that's definitely slam. the divested woman's anthem <laughs> a bop for the summertime i love that but y'all lori harvey is f nigga free y'all she is f nigga free and i love that for her lori and michael b jordan broke up y'all lori says she outside this summer <laughs> and i love it um, they confirmed that they are split because Michael B. Jordan wanted to commit. And Lori said, nah. She said, nah, not today. <laughs> so that's what I want to talk about today, y'all. How important it is to be fuck nigga free. So Lori said, nah, you not tying me down with your old ass. You ain't about to take my best years. I'm only 25. I'm outside. I'm outside this summer. So let's watch this clip and then we will chat. Michael B. Jordan and Lori Harvey call it quits after just over a year of dating. It's officially over for the power couple. A source tells ET 25 year old Lori and 35 year old Michael, quote, were at different stages in their lives. The two of them are trying to move on, but they're both heartbroken and upset. <laughs> the pair was never shy about sharing their love and packing on the PDA on Instagram. But Lori has since deleted all old photos with the Black Panther actor from her page. Since news broke of the romance ending, it seems like the pair is leaning on their pals for support. 
Here's Lori catching up with her pal Justine Sky at a baby shower over the weekend, appearing to be in good spirits while posing with mom to be Kristen Crawley. Meanwhile, it's guys night for Michael, but he appeared to have different energy. An eyewitness tells ET the actor attended game two of the NBA championship series looking quote, a little sad and unenthusiastic. Our source adds he didn't mingle or take photos. Instead, he spent the night chilling with Corday. He spoke to the Golden State Warrior general manager, Bob Myers, and said hi to g Easy. Y'all, it's over, y'all. So Michael B. Jordan is sad. The Nignogs are mad. They're trying to shame Lori, saying that she's ran through and stupid-ish like that. But this is a win for Lori Harvey. Again, this man was old as F. There was a 10-year age gap, y'all. So he was being a creep. And I don't know why these men like to do that predatory-ish. This girl is only 25 years old. Michael B. Jordan is 35. Our good sis here said it best. So y'all have heard about Michael B. Jordan and Lori Harvey. And like there's the rumors that she's just not ready to settle down. And he is. You know what he should do? He's 35. So what if he got with somebody who was 35 as well? Bingo. Bingo, sis. That's too much like right, though, y'all. Y'all, I'm 34. I ain't got nothing for a 20-something-year-old. I can't connect with someone born in the late 90s. Ladies, do not do this. Your 20s are your best years. They are for growing, exploring, and learning. They are for educating yourself, traveling, establishing your career, becoming more cultured, becoming a more fuller person, a fuller person who is more worldly and a more fulfilled person. And Dusty's know this. This is why Michael B. Jordan never got married in his 20s. So I think it's effed up for him to expect Lori to sacrifice her 20s and commit to him so young. Like, Lori needs to ask him, hey, why didn't you get married so young? Why didn't you get married when you were 25? It's because they know, Dusty's know that that age is a special time for you to be free and to be selfish. 20s are not for sacrificing. It's especially not for being some old Dusty's trophy wife. Don't do that. Lori has a history of this, though. She even dated Diddy's old geriatric ass. He like 58 or something. He old enough to be somebody's pawpaw. Men who intentionally date much younger women do not have good intentions, hey? And I need for the younger ladies listening to understand that. I know you think you're very mature for your age and that's why he's attracted to you, but no, that's not it. You may be mature, but they do this strategically because they know that younger women are more impressionable. They are easily influenced. They are easily impressed. They want to build a bride, someone who they can control and manipulate and mold to be exactly what they want them to be. They also just want you for aesthetics. You're cute. And they like the way that it looks to have a young, fine thing on their arm. So don't do this. So Lori is not divested, unfortunately. She has a history of dating Dusty Nicknog. She even dated Future's Dusty Ass with his nine damn children with several different women. Thank the Lord she didn't get pregnant and become baby mama number 10. But I'm happy for Lori. I really am. She's having fun. She's remaining non-committed. She's meeting new people. She's also on birth control. That's a page that all Black women need to take from her book. She ain't letting none of these bum ass dudes pump and dump her and turn her into a baby mama and mess up her figure and tie her down, which is great. She's also dating hypergamously. She's not dating broke dudes. So now, Lori, I just need for you to divest so you can really be fuck nigga free girl. So we know Lori is absolutely stunning by anybody's standards. And I don't give a F what group of men you're talking about. This girl is undeniably beautiful. She also comes from money. So we know that she's Steve Harvey's stepdaughter. So what she needs to do is pull an Eve and divest and nab her somebody's wealthy son. So that's what I want to talk about tonight. I want to talk about why Lori should divest and truly be F and F, truly be f nigga free. I also want to illustrate why you should too, y'all. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow.
keep black women's names out your f***ing mouth. I said, keep black women's names out your f***ing mouth. Seriously, guys. Are you tired of all the negativity and toxicity black women are subjected to in media, music, and online? We are ridiculed, denigrated, and berated daily, and I'm sick of it. That's why I created a private safe space for black women that focuses on divestment, development, and self-empowerment. My private Patreon is for black women only, and it's a community where we are affirmed, encouraged, supported, and uplifted. For the cost of a coffee, get access to my Patreon community, which consists of a private Discord group to connect with like-minded Black women, add free bonus content, exclusive private lives, and much, much more. You can check it out on patreon.com slash LexisExodus. The link is also listed below. Shout out to my exes. So let's look at a few examples that illustrate the importance of living a f- nigga free life. So I want to talk about Young Miami, y'all. Rapper Young Miami. So she is a great example of why it's best to divest and be F and F. So she's dating Diddy. Speaking of Diddy, (laughs) again, we talked about how his old ass was dating Lori Harvey and how these men are predatory and do this bull is strategically and intentionally. Diddy dated Lori. He dated Cassie, who was much younger than him. He's 52 years old, dating a 28 year old. Well, we know Dusty Diddy ain't ish and he's a womanizer. So it didn't surprise me that Young Miami ended up getting into it with another woman over him. So let's watch this and then we'll chat. Young Miami recently acted up on Twitter and now she's explaining why. While the City Girl rapper has remained pretty mum about her romance with Diddy, she opened up to Complex 360 about her social media spat with his ex-girlfriend, Gina Huynh. In case you missed it, the ladies traded jabs on social media after Huynh posted a photo of the bad boy mogul kissing her cheek. When asked why she even gave the situation her attention, she replied, Cause bitches want attention. You know how a person just keep poking you? Mm -hmm. So I was like, what's up? Yeah. I see you. Relax. Miami's group member and best friend JT also chimed in defending her actions, saying, Ain't no like bullies. Like, yeah, don't play with me. Like, like nobody, we ain't like, she ain't nobody to play with. So if she want to say something, she can say something. It's like, she's she gonna be forgotten tomorrow. She gonna still be on Miami, you know? Miami also doubled down on her request for Huynh to pay her 20% for seemingly helping to promote her new music. Meanwhile, Diddy has remained mum about the love triangle and feud. Okay, so I want to talk more about this ghetto interaction that young Miami had with one of Diddy's baby moms. And yes, I said one of them because she's just one of several. This Asian lady is. So she ended up posting a picture trying to be messy of Diddy kissing her, knowing that he's in an open relationship, not an open relationship, that he's openly in a relationship with young Miami. So that pissed young Miami off. So she responded and said, somebody get this bit some attention. Okay. And then they continued to go back and forth. And young Miami said, I am. And that's why I F with your nigga and ain't coming off him. I don't care how many pics you post. And then she posts, I ain't arguing with no bitch that got cheap ass lint ball carpet in they house effing on a billionaire, you freaky ass bitch. <laughs> so a mess. This is just so ghetto. This is embarrassing. You're supposed to be a city girl, Miami. Like, what happened to real life? Mm, give up about a nigga? Girl, you a city girl. You're supposed to be focused on the bag. Not getting into it publicly, embarrassing yourself with a dude's other baby mama. That's ghetto. Y'all got too much money to be doing all this. Um, And let's also talk about Diddy's resume and talk more about why Young Miami would benefit if she divested and if she was FNF. So Diddy is 52. So we know that's when the health conditions are starting to kick in. So he needs a nurse, which is likely why he continues to consistently date much younger women. He'll also probably need a blue pill soon to get it up. This dude has five children by three different women, so he's a womanizer and is trash. 
Also, at his big age, at the big age of 52, he's never been married, although he's had all of these children out of wedlock. I remember poor Cassie talked about how badly he treated her and had her around for 10 years and and never committed to her and never married her, just wasted her prime years, her 20s, which are her best years. Same with his child's mother, Kim Porter. He pumped and dumped her with three kids only to tell her that he wasn't ready to marry Y'all, I read an article where he was talking about now he's ready, but the woman's dead now. She's long gone. God bless herself. Just like a nigga, though. We know that's what Dusty's do. You gonna die first before a nignog proposes to you. And here we have young Miami, youthful, rich, famous, and fine. She's sitting here publicly fighting his baby mama over him. Again, this is ghetto. Woo, the ghetto. The ghetto, like Nini said. These people have way too much money to be behaving like this. But this is what happens when you don't divest and when you don't live a F nigga free life. Okay, so nigga dogs are for everybody. There's so much toxicity because he's going to want to pump and dump everything in a skirt. So yeah, you'll be out here fighting baby mamas, humiliating yourself over someone who will never marry you. And I know everybody doesn't want marriage, so I'm not sure if that's even something that young Miami wants, which is fine. Everybody doesn't doesn't want to be married. But don't be out here embarrassing yourself, publicly fighting other women over him. If young Miami divested and was really F nigger free, she wouldn't be out here like this. She wouldn't be looking crazy. Okay, so I want to get to another example that illustrates why it's important for black women to be F nigger free. Y'all, Nick Cannon has more children on the way, y'all. So let's watch this and then we Nick Cannon is adding another baby to his brood. The 41-year-old confirmed that he is expecting his eighth child with model Brie Ticey during his daytime talk show on Monday. All right, y'all. So here it is. I never usually use my own personal pictures as pick of the day, but today I have to do it because I want to share this beautiful, extraordinary moment. Uh, it's me and... Uh, Bree, the next mother <laughs> uh, of our child. It's a boy we found out officially yesterday. <laughs> Even that felt, it's weird, because that, that sounds weird saying the next mother, because uh, as everybody knows, I have a lot of children. Yeah. And, um, and I love them all dearly, sincerely. The pair celebrated the news with a party in Malibu over the weekend and revealed if they're having a boy or girl. This is their first child together, and Brie, who finalized her divorce with her ex-husband Johnny Manziel in November, will be a first-time mom. The masked singer host is already the father of seven other kids. He shares 10-year-old twins Moroccan and Monroe with Mariah Carey, 4-year-old Golden and 1-year-old Powerful Queen with Brittany Bell, and 7-month-old twins Zion and Zillion, whom he had with Abby De La Rosa. Nick also welcomed Zen with Alyssa Scott in June 2021. He tragically died on December 5th after being diagnosed with brain cancer last year. The news of his latest addition comes nearly two months after the passing of his young son. On his show, he explained how challenging the situation has been. This whole process was extremely difficult for me because um, I've known about, you know, Bree's pregnancy for a while now, even before my youngest son Zen passed in December. And so even going through all of that, this was always in the back of my mind, like, when is the right time? How do I share this? You know, no one, we didn't expect Zen to pass away. We didn't, you know, the, all of the news was so unexpected. So to kind of figure out a chronological order or a hierarchy, it just, it, it kept me up at night. He went on to open up about his grieving process. I always talk about the guilt that I felt you know, and, and losing Zen and even for, you know, how to deal with this for my other children. And that was a lot of the guilt as well, too. The, the guilt for everyone involved. And I just really want to say thank you to every one of my family members who've just been so understanding and helping me through this process because um, it's weird. Like, what do you do? You know, I wanted to definitely respect the grieving process with Alyssa and, and, and Bree was was respectful enough to she she held off making her announcements nick said that he hears people claim that he is careless irresponsible and selfish but says he is in a good place and loves all of his children unconditionally at the end of the day when when a life comes into this world it's a celebration and i'm excited i'm happy and y'all gonna go with me on this entire journey so for all the doubters and 
naysayers, non-believers, pessimists, antagonists in my incredible journey who don't wish me and my family a happy ending, well, you gonna see. We gonna get to it. I'm gonna be the best dad I can possibly be because I'm trying my best. This is so damn ghetto, y'all. This is so damn ghetto. So I want to rewind back to uh, this shower photo that he shared. I thought this was a wedding picture. I'm like, oh my gosh, Nick finally legitimized one of these unions and has actually gotten married and committed. Nope, it's just a baby shower. We know they don't like to marry. The crowd must have thought that it was a wedding picture too. Y'all see how they cheered at first until his trifling eyes said awkwardly, this is my next child's mother. Like then the white people just suddenly started nervously laughing awkwardly because this is a hot ass mess. I have secondhand embarrassment. And the gag is, to make it even worse, he hinted that he actually has multiple kids on the way. So they're saying that he has three more children on the way at the same damn time. Child, let's watch this and then we'll chat. It says you have three babies on the way. Is that true or false? Well, when you say on the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? God damn it, Nick. What, what count you at? I'm a, let's just put it on this On the way. way. They're on not the here way. yet. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're coming. They're so on look, the, the stork is on the way. Ooh, this, the stork this, has the package? Yes, there's, there's, there's three. Damn, I don't, I don't know. know. It could be... Yeah, you know, with this, <laughs> nah, I, this is what I said. If you thought the numbers I uh, put up in 2021 was, you know, <laughs> wait, wait till wait you see what happened to in 2021. You oh, know, wow. there's a lot of kids last year. Oh my year. god! I th okay, so <laughs> what happened with this whole therapy, the celibacy? This Yo, so you were right there. Okay, I, I'm glad I get to talk about this. So obviously, and uh, I did my therapist when I was starting my show and stuff had told me I needed to chill out. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, let's try celibacy. Right. And that was like October. Like, like January. No, I didn't even make it to January. I was supposed oh. to go. That was the whole thing. I was supposed to make it to the top of the year. But then obviously I would start going through some stuff with, you know, just I, I got depressed, like with the loss of my son and stuff. So in December, and the thing is, because everybody saw I was so down. Mm -hmm. So everybody's like, let me just give him a little vagina. Right. And that's no. okay. I know what makes him feel better. And, right. and that's what, and I, I <laughs> fell victim to it because I was in a week, say, so December, especially right <laughs> during, right before Christmas, I started like crazy mm -hmm. and that's when it like so i, I it, broke the celibacy but i was probably right. celibate for probably like a month and a half strong i mean you yeah, were there i was trying know. to do it yeah i had a new show new energy i was dealing with he a said lot i was there like so, i was every so, day like so, so what you october, doing Nick? so october 22 <laughs> so around the holidays we should expect be expecting some all these september some october the babies on the way, way. Uh, story, huh? yeah, let me ask you this are pretty good at math <laughs> <laughs> this is disgusting this shit is so ghetto. This is so ghetto. And they, they are laughing at this. This is not a laughing matter. I listened to more of this interview. If you guys are interested in hearing the entire interview, um, this is called Lip Service. It's Angela Yee's podcast where he talks about all sorts of dysfunctional, toxic ads. At one point in the interview, he talks about how he has to get his prostate checked often due to his health issues. Y'all, why does Nick Nock say he's supposed to refrain from having sex for two days before they can check his prostate, but he usually can't make it that long? Like, why is this dude so hypersexual? And trigger warning, what I'm about to say may be triggering to some, but I swear I'm so serious and I'm asking an honest question because I don't know. Did Nick ever talk about being essayed as a child or something, like being abused as a child or something sexually? Because I know when that happens, sometimes that can make people become hypersexual like this. Like, dude, why can't you go without having sex for two days so you can make sure you're healthy? Like, really, you that horny? Then he talks about in the interview how it's all unprotected with multiple women at the same time because he makes sure they get tested and make sure that they're healthy. It's like, FBI, can y'all arrest this nigga? Like, seriously, I know y'all, they dropping like flies. The Dusties, y'all done got um, Young Thug, y'all done got Gunna and a slew of other rappers. Can y'all also take Nick Cannon with y'all so he can stop having so many damn illegitimate children? He already has eight kids by four different women, y'all. Now he has three more on the way with who knows how many different women. Like, what the F? He also remixed Sierra's Prayer. 
So you guys know that I'm a huge fan of Summer Walker, even though she makes struggle love music. Sonically, her music is beautiful. Um, and on her most recent album, she has a track on there where she has Sierra on and she shares her prayer that she said before meeting Russell Wilson. Well, Nick Cannon remixed this and created a ratchet ass players prayer track. So let's listen to this where he talks about this toxicity and really illustrates why it's very, very important to stay at nigger free. I'm so sorry. I apologize so heartedly to force you guys to endure that. But if I had to listen, you do too. Y'all, this damn album is called Raw and B. The nigga who got eight kids by several different women with three more on the way. He making an album called Raw and B. And the album cover has a black woman nude with him and it's like no nick you keep that over there you keep that over there with the preferences we don't need that dysfunction we don't need any more baby mamas we have enough within this community child this is so damn trifling like this is so trifling he talking about have them screaming jesus she can't take this penis <sighs> what is wrong with these nick nogs what is wrong? This is that's why I'm like it's mentally he he's obviously unwell. He's obviously unhinged and is not thinking straight. He's talking about he wants these women to want a family and not plan B. No, Nick, you need a vasectomy. You need a vasectomy and a therapist. You need to talk to a professional because you are mentally unwell. You are not well. This don't make no damn sense. This don't make no damn sense. All of these broken homes, all of these fatherless homes that he's intentionally making and still continuously continuing to do so. Child, I cannot. The, and the crazy part is regular broke Dusties do this too. We just talked about a Dusty who has 34 kids with nine different women and he just a truck driver. Y'all, but this illustrates exactly why it's important to stay F nigga free child i cannot i want to look at another great example that illustrates why women need to divest and truly be f and f so i want to talk about super scent her stupid ass we're gonna call her super mammy instead of super scent let's call her super mammy and we just talked about super mammy how she's a makeup mogul if you're unfamiliar with her and she's established a very successful business and large brand in the makeup industry making millions okay but she's a big old trick. That's why we call her Super Mammy. She loves dating Dusties who are broke. And then she'll do all this tricking on them and will pay their bills and will house them and clothe them and will bend over backwards and jump through hoops just to turn around and get embarrassed every single time. 
So last week we talked about how she bought her newest sugar baby land, even though they're not even married. They only been together for a year. Well, now these internet streets are saying that the Dusty got someone else pregnant on her, y'all. Child. So this is her responding to those rumors. This been going on since my daughter day. Same thing been going on. Same exact thing. Same exact thing. Once I got engaged, same thing. Baby the J page came out and baby on the way. This is this, the same thing been going on. I don't know who hate me that much, but it's weird. And the fact that this got to happen with, with, with my new relationship, I ain't never had no accusations came out with, with, with this man since I've been with him. Not one accusation, not one who ever stepped to me and said they dealt with him, been with him, nothing. I've never had that. So I'm trying to see who hate me this much to make a page to, to make, to do, put all this energy into, into my relationship. It's not that serious. Just leave me alone. It's okay for you to leave me alone. I'm I'm not giving my ring back. I'm not breaking up with him. I'm I'm not gonna leave him alone. I'm gonna stay with him. I'm gonna be with him. Lord Jesus, this is so embarrassing. I hate when black women go out like this. And I put in the comment section, well, yeah, this is why you don't trick off on men, cause you gonna lose every single time. You gonna get embarrassed, cause he gonna take your money and spend it on the next chick. That's what these dusties do. Women need to understand masculinity better. I'm going to need for black women to really have a firmer grasp on this. Men pride themselves on being protectors and providers, okay? So it's very emasculating to them when the woman does the protecting and the providing instead, okay? So this never ends well. It never ends well tricking off on dudes. And I tend to forget how forward-thinking and progressive, divested women are. Because when I tell y'all after I said that, the mammies were triggered, y'all. They came for me talking about, shut up. You just jealous because you can't boss up like her and treat your man. Women from the South, we spoil our men. That's what one lady said. She said, it's a Southern thing. We we, we spoil our men. It ain't tricking if you got it. <laughs> I'm like, child, cheese. It ain't tricking if you got it. That saying was coined by men who like to trick off on women because that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to do the tricking. Not you. Another woman said, oh, you're just a wannabe blogger who can't afford to do this. You're just jealous. I'm like, girl, bye. This is why I don't advocate for divested women trying to openly share the messaging of divestment in your real lives and trying to save even the mammies in your real lives. Don't do it. You can like plant seeds here and there and do it discreetly but tread lightly and be very careful about that because these hoes don't want to be saved they don't want to be saved they, they're addicted to toxic love and toxicity and struggle and strife and struggle love they want to continue to mule and cape and sacrifice themselves for dusty nignogs mammies love that ish because they big old pick knees and they know that blackistan promotes dusty worship so they wear that ish like a badge of honor and they just want to be validated by this community so don't waste your breath they'll just get triggered we know that blackistan is like a cult and telling them to burn the cape is like telling a christian you're an atheist y'all they gonna lose their mind and flip the f out so don't do that in your real life but this girl looks foolish though spending all her money to take care of these men and they constantly give her their asses to kiss every single time so she done publicly did all this for this Dusty. And days later, the vlog's saying he got a baby on the way, y'all. Allegedly. <laughs> because this hasn't been confirmed. But again, y'all, this is why it's really, really important to stay F nigga free. Okay? Same with Khloe Kardashian. She stay getting embarrassed by an F nigga. So let's watch this and then we'll chat. Him his 30th birthday. So she, he went home from the 30th birthday party, went to Houston to play on the road. We can check his schedule and then slept with this girl. Yeah. I just sent it to him and I go, does Chloe know about this? Chloe's not answering. She has no idea. If he doesn't at least talk to her about this stuff before it happens, that's like, that's insane. I mean, she. It's just insane in general. Like, well, no, the whole thing is. This is just insane. a never ending, like, but it's never ending betrayal is what it is. Now this is the biggest sign. She's a, the, the, the the whole thing that's so sad is she wants a baby boy. And, she, and now this girl's having a baby boy, a random, that he sleeps with one night. F him. Oh, I was so team him. Oh, she doesn't deserve this. She doesn't deserve this. She has to, this has to be the final sign. Chloe can't win for losing child. 
<laughs> so what we just listened to is Kim Kardashian having a conversation about how Tristan intentionally withheld the information about him having another baby on the way, withheld it from Chloe and allowed her to throw him a birthday party and didn't tell her until afterwards. So Chloe can't win for losing child. She didn't have five different faces, y'all. She didn't swap bodies to look good for these dusties. And they still embarrassing her out here like this. Kim said even Chloe wanted a son. She wanted a male child. And this dude up and impregnated and pumped and dumped another chick. And she having a boy instead of Chloe. This don't make no damn sense. It's like, how are you going to let somebody throw you a birthday party and wait till afterward to tell them that you cheated and you got a side baby on the way? But this is your F nigga, y'all. This is your F nigga. Y'all, please, please. Learn from this. Be F nigga free. Please live a dusty, free, divested lifestyle. If you don't, you're going to go out like Chloe. You're going to be baby mama number nine. You're going to be step mommy to side babies. You're going to be fighting other women over them. You ain't ever going to get a ring. You're going to turn into a baby mama. You're going to get embarrassed. Divest y'all. All right, that's all I got. Until next time, see you guys. Bye. I don't give a fuck. Even if you think I should, bitch. Nigga, I don't give a a red iPhone. Can you please bring it to the sound stage? Red iPhone, appreciate it.